Hi, in this video I'm gonna put the ASUS Zen Wi-Fi XT9 mesh system to the test. This is actually the part 2 video. In the first part, in case you missed it, I actually set up the whole system and then talked about my kind of first impression after using it for only about 2 weeks. But in this video we're gonna see some more in-depth tests. So after I set up and install the mesh system, it is kind of important to know how much of maintenance this mesh system requires in order to be up and running all the time. For example, if there is a power outage or for whatever reason one or more of the nodes go down, are they able to come back online and recover from that automatically or maybe I have to do everything from scratch again. Or if um, I need to update the firmware, which at some point I will need to, there is only one of them that's directly connected to the internet, but what about the rest of them? Can I easily update all of them or maybe I have to move them around? And of course it is also important to know about the Wi-Fi speed, Wi-Fi range and those kind of things as well. So that's what we're going to try to find out in this video. In the first test, I wanted to see how well the mesh nodes can stay connected to the main router if something happens to the network. It is not good if for whatever reason the mesh nodes go down permanently because you might have to set up the mesh system again which is not fun. Therefore, it is essential to know if the mesh nodes can remain connected to the network. Now to make the test more interesting, I added two more nodes to the mesh system, two GT6 devices, which I've already talked about and tested in that video. They're all set up this way. The main router is an XT9 and the rest of them are connected wirelessly as nodes and daisy chained to each other. So when I turned the main router off, all the nodes went down. However, once the main router was back online, all the nodes came back online without any issues. I also turned off all the nodes together as well as each of them individually and they were all able to establish a connection to the main router once I turned them back on again. An interesting observation was that when I turned off node 2, node 3 was still able to establish a connection to the main router by going through node 1. So overall the mesh system for the XT9, which is called the AI mesh system, showed to be very stable, at least in my tests. I mean as long as the nodes were within the wireless range of each other, or in other words, as long as there was a good network design, the mesh network seemed to be working fine. In this test, I wanted to see how convenient the firmware update process is in the Zen Wi-Fi XT9 mesh system. It is essential to ensure that you can easily upload the firmware of not only the main router but also the nodes. For example, you don't want to have to connect every node directly to the internet in order to upload the firmware. Because it is inconvenient, it can disrupt the network and can take a lot of time. But instead you want to make sure you can update the firmware without removing the nodes and with the least amount of downtime. So I realized there were three different ways to update the firmware. One way is to just do it manually by downloading the latest firmware file from the ASUS website. This way I would need to ensure that I download the correct file for both the main router and the nodes. If the devices are of different models, the firmware would also be different. In my case, since there are two XT9 devices, they use the same file. So basically this way I just need to upload the files for each device one by one. I started with the node and then updated the firmware for the main router. The process was easy and I did not encounter any problems. However, if I have many nodes, it might take a long time to update each one individually. So this is definitely something I want to keep in mind. Another way to update the firmware is by pressing the firmware upgrade button. This button will appear when the system detects that there is a newer version available. I tried it a couple of times and it worked without any problems. The good thing about this method is that when I pressed the button, it updated both devices, which is very convenient when there are multiple nodes. The last and I would say the easiest method is to turn on this firmware upgrade option. This feature allows you to specify a time for the system to automatically check and install any updates. It is best to choose a time when the network is least busy such as midnight or maybe very early in the morning to ensure that the firmware upgrade process doesn't disrupt the network. 
I tried it and it worked without any problems. It updated both devices as well. Overall, the firmware upgrade test was a success. And as long as the nodes were connected to the main router, they could easily be updated, which is good. In the speed test, I'm going to use iPerf, which is a great tool for testing the throughput of the network. The iPerf server is connected through a simulated internet connection to the main router, and the speed all the way from the server to the router is 2.5 gigabits per second. The iPerf client, which is equipped with a Wi-Fi 6E network card, is connected to the 5 gigahertz band of the node 1. The backhaul connection at this point is wireless, and the second 5 gigahertz band is dedicated to that. The distance between the client 1 and node 1 is about 7 meters and the distance between node 1 and main router is about 15 meters. So almost 1 gigabits per second in a close to real life scenario. I mean all the way from the client through the node 1, then a wireless backhaul, main router and the server. So I can guess that if the backhaul had been wired, I would have seen more or less the same number, right? Because the wired backhaul would have been 1 gigabits per second. In fact, I gave it a try and I was right. After I was done with the speed test, I decided to test the roaming situation without making any changes to the network or moving the nodes. So I started walking back and forth between the nodes with my laptop and tried to see if there was seamless roaming or not. I realized that the roaming for the 5 GHz band was seamless and happened with no issue. However, the situation was different for the 2.4 GHz band as it seemed to want to stay connected to the main router even though I was closer to the node 1. The reason behind this is the fact that the 2.4 GHz band has a longer range compared to the 5 GHz band. Therefore, when I was closer to the node 1, it still received a rather strong signal from the main router, so it did not feel that it should switch. Now ASUS has a feature called Roaming Assistant and I have talked about it before. It actually forces any clients whose signal strength is less than the number I enter here to disconnect so they can connect to the other node. By default it was set to minus 70 for both frequency bands and as we saw it worked perfectly for the 5 GHz band. However, for the 2.4 GHz band, the minus 70 setting was not working because I actually had to be very close to the other node in order for the signal strength to go as low as minus 70. So changing the setting to minus 60 for the 2.4 GHz band seemed to fix the problem, which was great. For the Wi-Fi range test, I compared the range of a Zen Wi-Fi X-T9 with an RTAX 86U which I've already reviewed and tested before. Now, to make the test as fair as possible, I made sure they were located in the same spot, used the same Wi-Fi channels, and of course, I tested one router at a time to make sure they were not interfering with each other. Interestingly enough, when I was in the kitchen which was not that far from the router, the X-T9 showed a stronger signal for both of the bands. However, as I got farther away in the garage and in the backyard, the RTAX 86U showed a stronger signal. Okay, so let's quickly recap what happened in this video. But before we get there, I just need to point out that the numbers that you saw in my test were based on my testing environment here. And it doesn't mean everybody should see the same numbers because obviously each environment is different. Now, as far as the stability of the mesh network for the Zen Wi-Fi XT9, I did not encounter any issues. I even switched back and forth between wired and wireless backhaul because I heard some people had some issues when they used wired wired backhaul. I did not encounter any issues. I could also easily take care of any firmware updates either manually or automatically. And that reminds me of how much the AI mesh system has actually improved over the years because neither of those was as smooth as what it is today when the AI mesh system had first come out.
The speed test, in my opinion, was a success too. Because as we saw, and as far as the speed is concerned, the wireless backhaul could easily keep up with the wired backhaul in a close to real life scenario. Let's not forget, this is not something that was usually possible before. But nowadays with the technology that is available in the Wi-Fi 6, and also using a dedicated band and dedicated channels only for the backhaul, it is possible. Now the signal strength of the X-T9 based on my experience and my test was good but when I compared it side by side with the RT-AX 86U this one was a little bit better. Now the fact that when I was close to the routers the signal of X-T9 was stronger and as I got further away it became the opposite could be due to different antenna configuration. Overall and in my experience the Zen Wi-Fi X-T9 has been a great Wi-Fi mesh system. I've been using it for over a month now and I have more than 50 wired and wireless devices in my network and they all have been working fine. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Please hit that like button if you did and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the upcoming videos. Thank you again and I will see you next time.